if there's one thing we took away from Captain Marvel, it's to never, ever trust a cat. Okay, so maybe that wasn't supposed to be the lesson, but it's some solid life advice nonetheless. If you want to avoid spoilers for Captain Marvel, you'll want to turn back. But if you already saw the movie, we'll let you know all about Goose from the true extent of his abilities to what they could mean for our heroes in Avengers Endgame. There are just some characters out there who can't help but steal the show despite their limited vocabulary. Just look at Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise, or Goose from Captain Marvel. In the comic books, Carol Danvers names her pet Chewie, after Chewbacca from Star Wars. Yes, in addition to being a badass superhero and pilot, she's also a huge nerd, just like everybody else. Considering that Disney owns the rights to both Captain Marvel and the Star Wars franchise, it surprised many fans that the movie version of this cute orange creature is named Goose. Is Disney just not big enough for two Chewies? Or did they simply want to avoid any speculation that the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Star Wars Universe are one in the same? Co-director Anna Bowden clarified that Goose was named after the character from the movie Top Gun. The reference was one that tied into the backstory of Carol Danvers, which is something she struggles to recall over the course of the movie. The Star Wars franchise has changed a lot since the 2006 issue when Carol ended up with Chewie. Now, Marvel Studios feels like the name Goose better encapsulates the zeitgeist of the time in which Carol Danvers was living her human life on Earth. Okay, now we know why he's named Goose and not Chewie, but what's up with the writhing mass of tentacles pouring out of his mouth? Well, as you probably remember from the movie, Goose isn't really a cat, but an alien known as a Flurkin. While Goose got plenty of camera time, we didn't learn much about what Flurkins actually are, other than that they look like cats, they're extremely dangerous, and they don't like being held in certain ways. Sorry, Fury. But in the comic books, we learned some shocking information about Flurkins, which could have some serious implications for Avengers Endgame. In the comic books, Carol adopts Chewie while under the impression that she's taking in a regular domesticated house cat. It isn't until a run-in with Rocket Raccoon that Carol realizes she's been sharing space with a Flurkin. The comic book Chewie is a female, which, trust us, is pretty relevant. Namely, because she eventually lays hundreds of eggs in Carol's spaceship, and that's why it's important to always spay and neuter your Flurkins, people. But in the Captain Marvel movie, Goose is a male creature, so we're gonna go ahead and assume he won't be filling Avengers HQ with eggs. As as we mentioned earlier, Flurkins are dangerous, and we saw this illustrated when Goose opened up his mouth to reveal a writhing mass of tentacles. But did you stop to wonder how all those appendages fit inside the teeny tiny little Goose? He's an alien, not a TARDIS, so he shouldn't be that much bigger on the inside. Most cats are filled with cat food and impotent rage, but Flurkins actually contain pocket dimensions inside of their bodies. These things are like walk-in bags and can store a seemingly limitless amount of things. Of course, most of these things are dangerous, such as tentacles or fangs. We saw Goose swallow the Tesseract and cough it up later in true kitty cat fashion, right on Nick Fury's desk. Seriously, why do they always pick the worst spot to do that? The Tesseract is a device created to safely contain the Space Stone, but we don't think it was meant to be ingested. The fact that Goose could safely swallow the Tesseract with seemingly no negative effects shows just how powerful he is. Maybe Loki should have tried swallowing the Tesseract when Thanos came after it. It's not like things could have ended much worse for him. At the end of Avengers Infinity War, we learned Nick Fury had a device capable of contacting Captain Marvel. This has caused many fans to wonder why he didn't summon her earlier. But the real question is, where's Goose been all this time? Captain Marvel left him with Nick Fury, but we haven't seen hide nor hair nor tentacle of him ever since. In the comic books, Flurkins are able to teleport themselves via their pocket dimensions, so it's possible Goose decided to join Carol Danvers after all. If she's coming back for Endgame, it could also mean the return of Goose. While we mostly saw Nick Nick Fury fawning over Goose. In the comics, this Flurkin is steadfastly loyal to Carol. Chewie even shows back up on Carol's spaceship after Carol left her and her 117 kittens at an intergalactic rescue center. During an interview, Samuel L. Jackson said Captain Marvel has the ability to travel through time. But during the movie Captain Marvel, we saw no evidence of this power, or her possessing a device capable of time travel. What if the trick to her time traveling ways was in front of our eyes the whole time? It's possible Goose could actually act as a conduit to time travel or alternate realities during Avengers Endgame. Goose could also provide a good answer to what our heroes are going to do with the Infinity Stones once we collect them. If Goose can travel through time and hold Infinity Stones inside his cute little body without becoming injured, he could prove to be an invaluable ally during Endgame. We're not sure how well humans could tolerate traveling inside of a Flurkin, but it'd definitely be interesting to see this explored on the big screen. Kinda gross, but also interesting. 
Now that you've learned more about the true nature of Goose, what do you think his powers could mean for Endgame? Do you think you'll have an important role to play? Let us know what you think in the comments section, and then click subscribe for more great videos from us here at CBR. See you next time.